Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Vet Surgery at Age. So today we will be discussing the anesthesia machine. In the previous class we have discussed the breathing circuits. If you haven't watched this video, I will give the link in the description, you can check that out. Okay, so let us go to the class. Before going to the class, some formalities, you can follow me in Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Before that, please do subscribe to this channel. Okay, so now coming to the parts of anesthesia machine. At last, I will show the anesthesia machine and all the parts. Before going to that, we should know individual parts. Okay, so first part is the pressure gauge. Okay. Usually a cylinder will be provided which will be giving the fresh gas flow or we can say in technical term this will provide the carrier gas gas which will uh, take the volatile anesthetics into the breathing circuit. We will discuss you, when you will see the machine you will know how it functions. Okay, This is the oxygen cylinder. Usually the oxygen gas is used as fresh gas or you can say you can, it is used as carrier gas but you can use also nitrogen oxide which comes in a blue color cylinder you can also use oxygen and nitrogen oxide in mixture also okay so this is a black color cylinder with a white neck it is oxygen cylinder okay first component is pressure gauge you see here this is a pressure gauge okay it denotes the pressure inside this cylinder okay all the commercial cylinder oxygen cylinders are provided under 2000 psi pound 2000 psi pound per square inch so you need to denote that pressure is usually kilopascal or psi here you may find use of psi more frequently in india also that is psi next part is regulator you see near to this pressure goes here is the regulator okay what it does you see 2000 psi is too high to be supplied into the breathing circuit the pressure at which it is supplied to the breathing circuit is 50 psi what does this regulator do this regulator it lowers the storage pressure that is 2000 pi psi to 50 psi which will be supplied to the anesthesia machine and then to the breathing circuit okay so this function of regulator is it converts or you can say it converts the high storage pressure to the a constant pressure which, that is 50 psi okay from 2000 psi to the 50 psi this is the function of regulator this regulator and the pressure gauge are part of cylinder Okay, from here a pipe will go to the anesthesia machine. This some in some anesthetic machines, this cylinder is incorporated inside the machine also. Okay. Next component is flow meter. This is flow meter. What it does? Okay. The so flow meter is usually positioned downstream from the regulator. Okay, because it, it is placed before the regulator, you know the pressure is 2000 psi. Okay. So after it has been decompressed or you can say it has been turned into the regular supply pressure that is 50 psi it is positioned thereafter to know the flow rate usually it is expressed in ml per minute or liter in per minute more popular is liter per minute okay here you see there are three flow rate uh, flow meters in this picture you may find one you may find two depends on the anesthesia machine here it is nitrogen oxide flow meter air flow meter and the oxygen flow meter okay you see these knobs these knobs are used to control the flow suppose you need the oxygen flow rate to be 1.5 okay so you have to adjust this knob you see this is one two three four that means that is one liter minute per minute two liter three liter four liter and here it is in more precise 0.1 liter, 0.2 liter, 0.3 liter. You have to adjust this oxygen. Suppose you have to uh, supply 1.5. Here you can adjust to 1, and here you can adjust to the 0.5. 1.5. Okay, then the flow will be 1.5 liter per minute. Another thing, this, you can see these markers. These markers. This is known as bobbin. B o b b i n bobbin. Okay. So if it is cylindrical type the mark the upper mark is the indicator 
इन सम किलोमीटर्स मे फाइंड ए सर्कुलर बबिन हाउ यूल नो दैट व्हाट इज द फ्लोरेट द सेंट्रल पोजिशन यूल डी नोट विद दि फ्लोरेट ओके यू अंडरस्टूड सो यू शुड नो सम नॉर्मल वैल्यूज व्हाट इज द नॉर्मल अमाउंट ऑफ यूजली द फ्रेस गैस और यू कैन से कैरियर गैस इज ऑक्सीजन ओके सो नॉर्मल कंजप्शन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन बाय एन एनिमल इज यूजली फोर टू सेवेन एम एल पर के जी पर मिनिट इफ द एनिमल इज टेन के जी सपोज यू इमेजिन द एनिमल इज टेन के जी दिन द नॉर्मल कंजप्शन विल बी फोर्टी टू सेवेंटी एम एल पर के जी पर मिनिट नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस अब फ्लोरेट विच यू विल डिस्कस द फ्लोरेट फॉर टू सर्किट्स फर्स्ट वन इज द क्लोज सर्किट विच वी हैव स्टडीड एंड ऑल्सो द सेकेंड वन इज वन ऑफ द मापलसन सर्किट दैट इज बेन सर्किट इट इज द मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ मापलसन डी ओके दीज टू टाइप ऑफ सर्किट्स आर यूजर यूज इन भेटनारी एनासोलॉजी ओके सो फॉर लो फ्लो सर्कल दीज टू वैल्यूज फॉर दि सर्कल सिस्टम फॉर लो फ्लो सर्कल सिस्टम द फ्लो रेट इज टेन टू फिफ्टीन एम एल पर के जी पर मिनिट If it is semi-closed, you can say high flow rate. It is 22 to 44 mL per kg per minute. Bain circuit can also be used for adult ones, or you can say they are classified as if you are using for more than 7 kg body weight. These are non-rebreathing circuits. They need more flow rate. Okay, so the flow rate is 100 to 150 mL per kg per minute. If it is used for pediatric patient, or you can say the body weight of the animal is less than 7 kg, then the flow rate is 200 mL per kg per minute. But remember, most of the time the flow rate is set at fixed at 1 liter per minute. Okay, you can say uh, if you will go to the a uh, veterinary anesthesia cheat sheet, there is a veterinary anesthesia cheat sheet. Cheat sheet, if you can download in internet, you will find it is a very good reference article for inhaled. Anesthesia. You may not find all the concept, but it is good enough to practice in the OT. Okay, so there you will find a mention that so in most of the veterinary patients, or you can say especially the small animals, it is you uh, the flow rate is usually set at one liter per minute. But you can give according to the body weight also. Next, the vaporizer. Vaporizer is the most important part in the anesthesia machine. The vaporizer is basically used for the volatile anesthetics, so that it can be delivered into breathing circuit and also into the patients. For gaseous anesthetics like nitrogen oxide, you do not need a vaporizer because it is already gas. Okay, so you don't need a special equipment. It can be supplied along with the oxygen. But for the volatile anesthetics, a special instrument known as vaporizer is used. Okay, sorry. Now. One assumption here, you see, the volatile anesthetics, the vaporization changes with the temperature and also pressure. Basic chemistry. Here, for easier for uh, easier understanding, we have taken the environmental pressure to be one atm, one atmospheric pressure, which is basically 14.7 psi. And also, the pressure at which gas is flowed is also same as one atm. Okay, we have. Taken for easier, there are some calculation so that it will be easy for us to calculate. Otherwise, you can calculate for the 50 psi, okay, which is basically uh, nearly 4 atm or you can say 3.5 atm pressure. Okay, and the supply one, environmental pressure is 1 atm pressure, but the supply pressure you can calculate for 50 psi on your own. I am calculating at 1 atm pressure that is 14.7 psi. You see, in the vaporization, you have poured the liquid. That is liquid. What will happen? This liquid, the particles in the liquid are in constant motion. Imagine this particle, which is very close to the surface. What will happen? This liquid, due to its energy, it may change state, and from the liquid state, it will enter the vapor stage. In the process is known as vaporization. Okay, so what will happen with time? There will be formation of vapor. You can understand by a better example. If you will keep a glass of water in the room temperature only, after one day or two day, you may find the volume of water will be decreasing. That is known as evaporation. The same is applied here. Okay, there will be evaporation. So what is equilibrium? 
A time will come there will not be any vaporization. More technically, the number of molecules entering the vapor phase will be same as number of molecules entering into the liquid phase. That is net is zero. Okay, net transfer is zero. That is known as equilibrium. At this equilibrium, the pressure exerted by these vapors is known as vapor pressure and it is usually expressed in mm of hg or mercury so most of the vaporizers are usually calibrated at 20 degrees celsius and 1 atm environmental pressure okay so at 20 degrees celsius the vapor pressure of here we will be taking example of isofluorine this is most common used uh, an inhalant anesthetic in anesthesiology that is why i am taking this, this example so at 20 degrees Celsius, the isofluorine has a vapor pressure of 240 mm of Hg. If we will increase this temperature to 24 degrees Celsius, we may find the vapor pressure increasing. Pressure is directly proportional to temperature and pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Okay, so it is 286, that is it is increased mm of Hg. Okay, many a time questions ask that what is the maximum volume percentage that can be supplied okay you may know about the mac minimum alveolar concentration we will be studying after some time about the minimum alveolar concentration you may find that may be 1.2 percent 1.5 percent but sometimes there are questions are asked that what a maximum or a volume percentage that can be supplied or that can be given into breathing circuit for gaseous anesthetics it is 100 percent because that is purely gas but the volatile anesthetic which is much more dependent on the pressure and temperature they cannot be supplied at 100 percent rate so what is the maximum rate suppose imagine this is the chamber and you have supplied the oxygen oxygen is carrier gas or you can say fresh gas so this carrier gas will take these molecules and supply to the breathing circuit or you can say an association and in turn the breathing circuit for your understanding i took an assumption that the gas which is supplied is under 1 atm pressure environmental pressure is 1 atm and also the supplied pressure is 1 atm 1 atm is 760 mm of hg mercury okay so the uh, the output is oxygen plus isofluorine here the dalton's law will be applied what is dalton's law the total pressure of a mixture is equal to in a summation of individual pressure of the gases here there are two gases the total pressure is 760 mm of hg okay and you know that at 20 degree celsius here at 20 degree celsius the pressure is 240 mm of hg there is a curve you can see this curve you can obtain the value from this curve also here the temperature here the vapor pressure this is the curve of isofluorine okay it is vapor at room temperature also okay so that is 240 the rest will be the oxygen so maximum volume will be you can calculate by this formula vapor pressure by environmental pressure into 100 that is 31.5 percent that is the maximum percent that can be given at 20 degrees if you are supposed to give more percentage you can you have to give more temperature okay under 24 degrees if the temperature is 24 degrees celsius then it can be supplied as 37.6 percent but in practically this much of percentage is not needed usually 1.5 percent 1.2 percent maximum 2 percent is needed what can be done how you are supposed to you see mac minimum alveolar concentration of isoprene is 1.2 to 1.5 percent under different authors uh, suggest different concentrations it is ranges from to 1.2 to 1.5 so how you are supposed to supply 1.5 percent you see here the pipe is connected and how you are supposed to control that only 1.5 percent will be going out okay so what uh, the modern uh, vaporizers do here there will be oxygen supply but they need the split this okay you can say this is the splitting then they will get a united okay so here the oxygen will go some part will go through this is known as diluent diluent 
and this is the gas flow to the vaporizer okay uh, if a particular fraction of um, volume of oxygen can be made pass through this then we can take the desired concentration okay that is a very complicated formula you don't need to know modern vaporizer has a dial setting if you will set the 1.5 percent it will deliver 1.5 percent but you should know how they are done okay so usually it is done by splitting this is known as splitting ratio uh, we will discuss the modern vaporizers also they have a splitting ratio you can say that uh, it splits or you can say it has very accurate flow rate okay in older uh, uh, anesthesia settings you may not find this accurate flow but in the modern uh, modern vaporizers you may find this accurate flow due to splitting of this fresh gas or you can say the carrier gas okay so when it will go through this and when it will finally be united with the diluent then also there will be further dilution so how much dilution how much diluent it is calculated machine by the machine and you don't need to worry and don't need to calculate and don't get your head jammed okay you don't need to worry only the machine will do but you should know the concepts how they are done next is minimum alveolar concentration you should know about this one what is minimum alveolar concentration it is that concentration concentration means volume percentage okay. so concentration that produces immobility in 50 percent of subjects that has been exposed to the supranoxious stimulus okay you can also say this is known as mat 50 if you will download the veterinary anesthesiology cheat sheet you will find a mac 95 what is the importance of mac 95 simple this is not 50 percent this is 95 percent it will produce immobility in 95 percent what is the importance of this mac 95 in veterinary anesthesiology it produces deep surgical plane okay it produces the surgical plane but you may not need this mac 95 most of the uh, surgeries can be performed in mag 50 okay so you should know about mag 95 which is 1.5 times the mag 50 if you are taking the example of the isoflurane you can see the reference values in different of uh, different inhaled cancer in the books also i am taking the example of isoflurane also I, when i will discuss the individual aspects the nitrous oxide the isoflurane sulfur i will discuss regarding their alveolar concentrations Okay, so isoflurane, the MAC value is 1.28-1.5% given by different authors, different references. So if I will take 1.5% as standard, then the MAC 95 will be 2.25%. But you may not need 2.25%, 1.5% will do for the most of the surgeries. One more thing, the 1.5% is needed at alveolar level, 1.5%. But the settings may be more than 1.5, the dial settings, it may be 1.6%, 1.5 because the breathing circuit will develop, uh, deliver, uh, sorry, the anesthesia machine will deliver, then it will come through the breathing circuit, then some part will be up, uh, inspired, then it will come to the alveolar. In this process, some inhalant anesthetic may be lost. That is why you may need light, slightly higher uh, dial settings to reach this minimum alveolar concentration at the alveolar level. Another thing you should remember, it is calibrated for 20 degrees Celsius. So at 20 degrees Celsius, you need a 1.5 percent. The gases which are usually diffused to this is alveolar, this is blood, then brain. They do not diffuse on the basis of volume percentage. They diffuse in the process uh, on the basis of partial pressure exerted by them. You have studied in the normal physiology that gases diffuse on the basis of partial pressure. So what is the partial pressure? If the supplied is 1 atm pressure, then it will come into by calculation 11.4 mm of HCG. That means if this much of partial pressure of isoprene is reached at the alveolar level, then it will start diffuse along to the uh, diffuse to the blood, then it will diffuse to the brain when all of the tissues the alveolar blood and brain will reach the 11.4 mm of hg of isoflurane then the animal will be in the anesthetized state so this is very important rather than the volume percentage but usually it is supplied in volume percentage 
you can remember it as volume percentage but you know should know the concept one thing suppose it is all the calculation are made under one atm pressure suppose you have going to you are gone to the high altitude under high altitude the pressure will be low okay it may be less than one atm pressure so modern vaporizer what it has when the pressure will decrease the volume will increase if you have set 101.5 percent in uh, one atm pressure suppose it delivers 20 ml suppose but when the atm pressure is low suppose 0.5 atm when you have moved to high altitude just remember the concept don't go into the numericals just remember the how they work if you ever needed those things you can find the books the values and you can calculate on your yourself but the important thing is to know the concept okay so when it is reduced the ambient pressure or environmental pressure is reduced to 0.5 atm volume may increase to 40 liter 40 ml but the modern vaporizer has self compensated okay so even though they supply more volume the partial pressure will be maintained at 11.4 mm of h modern vaporizers we will talk about the modern vaporizer just after this what are the properties of modern vaporizers how the uh, comp temperature compensation work pressure compensation work okay we will discuss them but you should know that when the barometric pressure or the environmental pressure decreases volume of anesthesia volume of gas increases but modern vaporizers are so capable that they maintain this partial pressure at the alveolar level that is why you may not need to change the dial settings under that similar dial settings you may perform the operation okay next we will know some properties of the modern vaporizers what are the properties of modern vaporizers modern vaporizer has temperature compensation what is temperature compensation remember one thing you have heard a phenomena known as uh, you have heard about the evaporation evaporation causes cooling okay suppose this is inherent anesthetic in liquid form it has 50 calorie of energy when it is 50 calorie it is produced 10 molecules 10 vapor 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay this is 10 number of vapors vapor molecule when it will forming when it will form the vapor vaporization or evaporation causes cooling when it will cool down that the temperature or the energy will be reduced to 40 calorie when the energy will be 40 calorie will 10 molecules again be formed no there will be formation of eight molecules maybe eight suppose these 10 molecules are needed for 1.5 percent mac or you can say one mac 1.5 percent if it is producing eight molecules how this will be maintained because there is less number of molecules okay so modern vaporizers have a temperature compensation the technical term for the evaporation or you can say the energy used for vaporization is latent heat of vaporization what does it mean it means the amount of energy that is required to convert the 1 ml of liquid to its vapor state that is latent heat of vaporization here the latent of vaporization is 10 calorie you can say here 10 calorie this reduction of 10 calorie is the vapor latent heat of vaporization so this much of energy or this much of uh, energy that is 10 calories should constantly be supplied so that 50 calories can be maintained and we can have this 10 molecule which will be which uh, through which we can maintain this 1.5 percent of concentration so what scientists did they used a material which has high specific heat specific heat means the amount of energy required to raise the temperature by 1 degree celsius of a 1 gram substance okay so it means the material itself will not get heated but it should have high conductivity that means it should uh, uh, channelize the ambient temperature go into the vaporizer 
so that the temperature deficit that is that 10 calorie can be maintained so the materials are basically copper bronze nowadays and stainless steel also coming okay so to that is this is known as temperature compensation okay for you see for isofluorine and sevofluorine this temperature compensation is made by by increasing or decreasing the flow of gas here you see the splitting okay i told about splitting how they are splitted also here the image okay how they are splitted so by increasing or decreasing this flow the temperature compensation can be done for iso and sevo for desfluorine there will be a heating coil specific for desfluorine because it has, it has high boiling point okay now next is flow compensated i already explained how the splitting is done so that the flow can be uh, accurate and accurate amount of analysis can be delivered to the analysis machine then to breathing circuit okay the splitting ratio carrier gas can be i already told you oxygen or oxygen plus nitrogen oxide modern day vaporizers have a very accurate flow rate it can uh, deliver very accurate in analysis from 250 ml per minute flow rate to the 15 liter per minute flow rate okay next third is back pressure compensated what do you mean by back pressure compensated suppose you have switched on the oxygen plus i will discuss what is oxygen plus when this uh, oxygen plus is opened the oxygen is delivered at a very high rate that 50 liter per minute it may increase the pressure inside the vaporizer but it has a mechanism or you can say it modern day vaporizer are so much uh, highly sophisticated or precisely designed that they withstand this high pressure also if you are providing the IPPP intermittent positive pressure ventilation when you have to close the APL valve and you are doing the assisted ventilation through rebreathing valve in that case also there will be pressure increase for that also they have a mechanism through which this pressure have to minimize or the pressure effect of pressure on the vaporizer is minimized or you can say nullified okay now we will so uh, these are the uh, basically the properties of modern day vaporizer which makes them more suitable to be used at high altitude low altitude or a, or any uh, normal temperature also in adverse temperature also they will deliver the inhalant anesthetic in a very precise manner next the oxygen flow oxygen plus sorry oxygen plus what is oxygen plus oxygen plus usually delivers high but unmetered oxygen flow to the common gas outlet or you can say breathing circuit why it is needed sometimes when the analysis machine is not used unnecessary gases may be may have accumulated in this breathing circuit when you will uh, press this oxygen flow under high flow rate this oxygen will go into the circuit it will push out the unnecessary gases and also it will flush the breathing circuit that is known that is why it is known as floss it will floss the breathing circuit okay and also it will readily fill this uh, this uh, breathing circuit okay that is why this oxygen floss is used also it is used to check okay um, in youtube also you will find how to check this anesthetic machine so if there is any leakage any problem okay during time any leakage in this breathing system especially in coaxial configuration or you can say any leakage in rebreathing bag or any problem with rebreathing that can be checked with oxygen plus button in oxygen plus button if you press the oxygen will be delivered at a flow rate of 35 to 75 liter minute usually 50 liter per minute, 50 liter per minute now we should understand all the parts which we have studied in this anesthesia machine you see the oxygen cylinder will be at the back of this instrument sometimes many uh, modern uh, anesthetic machine it has to be installed in the back side of this anesthetic machine or you, for your convenience i am drawing this here this is oxygen cylinder in the oxygen cylinder you will find a pressure gauge then a flow meter okay through which the oxygen will be supplied to here and you see here is the sorry oxygen will supplied in the back side through which here it will come it is flow meter this is sorry this is flow meter through the flow meter it will go to the anesthetic vaporizer okay there will be splitting okay i told you but it is inside the machine you cannot see just remember it will go through the vaporizer 
it will take the yellow means sevoflurane purple is isoflurane okay so this is sevoflurane machine it will take the sevoflurane and it will come and then it will enter the breathing circuit okay all the parts you understood this is oxygen cylinder now uh, to the oxygen cylinder there will be pressure gauge and near to the pressure gauge there will be a regulator oh sorry in the previous i told some flowmeter right this regulator sorry this regulator pressure gauge regulator then the this is a flowmeter this is vaporizer and through vaporizer it will enter into the breathing circuit and here you can say oxygen plus button okay i already discussed the breathing circuit in the previous class so this is all about you see first of all if you are very much worried regarding the calibration don't worry here you see in the anesthetic modern nasal machine there will be calibration in this dial simply set it to required percentage 1.5% 1.2% it will deliver the inhaled anesthetic you don't need to worry much about but if you are supposed to design a and vaporizer in some area where it is not found then you have to need the calculation but you should know how they are calculated and you should know all the concept that is the motto of this class that you should know the concepts you may not need to apply this but you should know the concepts so this is all about today the anesthetic machine is now covered next class we will be going for the uh, agents whether the gases and the inhalant okay so till then see you tata bye bye take care